welcome to episode six of Girl You Know What podcast. I am your host, Tahir. And I'm Keisha. And here we go again. Look, I'm trying not to laugh. Girl, okay, so uh, like I told you yesterday, I was just like, I didn't even take any notes this week. Usually I'll write down some stuff that I want to cover, but I just want to go this week. I mean, we might as well. We might as well, because we had a conversation last night, and we just, we oh, talked man. about we some... Was, we was, we was on the phone for an hour. Yeah, and, but we still How got a lot to say. we for an hour and still have, like, conversation because you, left? You, because your cousin's out here acting a fool. <laughs> you always try to put them on me and say they're my cousins, but these are your cousins this week, girl. <sighs> I'm going to throw one you. you. This week... <sighs> Go ahead, girl. First of all, I can't... Outside of M.A. Udoka, mm-hmm. I don't, I, I don't have the words. <laughs> I, I don't have them. Because I just, it's pure disgust. Like we say, I think this week we all was blue ivy looking over the balcony like, mm, peasants. Peasants. That's it. That's what everybody But as, unless you've been living under a rock, you know. That the sky is technically falling because me alone <laughs> has fallen victim to the Beyonce Lemonade <laughs> album. Ultimate fuckboy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how? And, and, and I'm just going to tell y'all what all the guys around the, the world are saying. Mm-hmm. How do you cheat on me alone? I mean, even the women are saying it. Even the straight ass women are saying it because it's like, "Hello, straight ass woman." Listen, I don't know how y'all doing it. I, I don't know how that happened. First of all, just looks aside. Nia Long is everything, but she is one of our national treasures. How dare that's a you? real black girl right there. That's I real. I want to be clear. Yes, that's a real black girl. And what do I mean by that? Mm-hmm. That's a brown skin mm-hmm. black woman with a relaxer. Okay. <laughs> Because I know y'all like to be natural, but okay. I mean, it's cool, it's cute, whatever. Right. But that's a brown skinned black woman with a relaxer raising two boys. Listen. Like, that's a black woman. That's like, a for black real. woman. And y'all, <sighs> but, but I'm going to go back. Everybody know I'm going to say this. I'm going to stand right here on this hill and die on it. Mm-hmm. When, I don't care how y'all feel about Giselle, she cute. Mm-hmm. And when Giselle was young, she was a baddie. Mm-hmm. And when Jamal cheated on Giselle, <laughs> I was like, "Oh, something is wrong out here." Listen, I, I that right there. I mean, cause what else you want? What, what else do you want? Child. When y'all talk about, oh, my girl got to look, she got to be. What else do you want? That is an HBCU educated. Mm-hmm. AKA with real funny color eyes. Them light eyes is hers. Those are hers, baby. Those are all hers. Long hair. I mean, she ain't, because I know we all know y'all don't like big women. Right. She ain't <laughs> overweight. I mean, I, when he, and he got the nerve to be out here looking like a toad. I mean, when he cheated on Giselle, I knew the game was fucked up that day baby listen you ain't been able to convince me since then and see i am <laughs> i'm not a follower like I, I follow jamal now of course but i didn't meet this jamal this cheating jamal right i knew jamal when he was at empowerment temple mm-hmm. i've been following jamal way back since he was the word network preaching at empowerment temple mm-hmm. so i seen them be married a lot of people ain't even never seen Giselle and Jamal be married. Right, because I'm not going to lie, I didn't. I knew who he was, but I didn't know who she was. Yes. So, yeah. Like, I've seen them be married and her be pregnant and having babies. Like, I've been following him preaching since way back then. Mm -hmm. So, when that happened, oh, baby, I knew it was over. (laughs) It was over. We ain't got no hope. And then, and everybody know I love Jay-Z. Mm-hmm. That nigga's ugly too. Listen. And when he had all the audacity, <laughs> all of it. To cheat on Beyonce. And let's just her and Giselle could pass with sisters. If Listen, we just being honest. If we just being honest. 
So y'all don't like them kind of women? Tell, tell me what it is. Because mm-hmm. this is, the, those two women are the copy of what y'all say, you know, y'all want. Exactly. Obviously you don't. When they got cheated, when, when he cheated on Beyonce, listen, no bitch is above reproach after that. Right. And of course those would say, oh, well, well, let's go back to the 90s. Of course. When Holly Berry was out here getting ping-ponged around from this one to that uh-huh. one. Cheated on by him, him. You know. I was going to bring up, I said, as fine as Eric Benet is and David Justice and all these men who she, you know, was associated with and everything, or married to, because her and, were, were her and Eric Benet, no, were they Her and Eric Benet was married. That's right. Her I, and David Justice was married. Mm-hmm. So She was dating Wesley Snipes, I believe. Yeah. So as fine as all of them are, and she is one of the most beautiful women ever to grace our screens and she still got cheated on no one's safe out here so it doesn't matter if the man is fine or if he looks like a camel it don't matter and i love jay-z too but let's keep it real you know thank you thank you no uh -uh. and he knows it and beyonce knows it so it's like you know it ain't no shade but it's just like it doesn't matter who you are and it's not saying, and we're not saying that women don't cheat either, but we're, we're not talking about that this week, so I don't But y'all hear. cheat stupid. Y'all <laughs> get the girl y'all want. We yes. cheat on men who treat us like shit. Listen, because it's we all... We treat on men, men who do not give us the emotional mm-hmm. affection that we're looking for. I was going to say, women cheat on emotion. Men cheat yeah, just like because we cheat y'all are nasty. Yeah, like we cheat for deep reasons. Yeah. Y'all cheat because it's a coochie in the room. That's it. Like, it's weird. <laughs> That's why y'all out here playing that song. You gonna let one of us mess all this up. Like, what? Who raised y'all? That's what it is. These children out here listening to these songs now, and y'all think that it's Ooh. cute. And I was, when you posted mm. that thing with all that 90s music, mm-hmm. when that Tony, Tony, Tony song came on. That is my favorite, one of my favorite songs of all time. I said, Lord, I wish I could go back and grow up again. Baby. If, if reincarnation is real, Jesus, you ain't never said it in the Bible. What? But if it is, what? I want to go back and grow up again. Listen. I want to, but see, now I don't want to be reincarnated because I uh-uh. want to go back to the 90s and grow up again. That's it. I just want to start from 1990. Just let's start from January 1st, 1990. I was, I just turned 11 years old. Oh, wow. yes. And that's a good age. That's a good age. Cause when I post, cause when I reposted those video clips from ninety one, the the caption on the original video said, "How old were you?" and "How did music make you feel?" or something like that. It was oh, just oh, like, I didn't see that part. I just loved the ones. That well, I, liked. I didn't. Um, I didn't repost their caption. I just reposted the videos. Oh, yeah. So, but that was the original caption from where I got the videos from. I think it's nostalgia nineties or something. Yeah, one yeah, of I pages. did see that. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. And that was their caption. And I said, baby, I was 11 years old. And I said, that's when I really started, like, truly understanding music. We were old. We were old souls, listen. Because I listened to, like, so I think about, like, songs that I literally used to sit in front of the TV and watch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we actually had music videos that. (laughs) Private Dancer. (laughs) Yes. By Tina Turner. Mm -hmm. Um, Wham. Is that oh my Wham? gosh, yes. Everything um, she wants, baby. Fearless Whisper. Mm-hmm. Like, those are videos that I used to, like, I loved them as mm-hmm. a kid. And I think, like, wait a minute, 85? What? Baby, listen. And I think about these five-year-olds, and I'd be like, oh, Child. God, I was old at a young age. Yes. I have always been old. And think, we sit here talking about Tony, Tony, Tony. Mm-hmm. We was, I was 10, about to be 11, too. No. Mm-hmm. I was... How old, what year did you say? 90? That was, those videos were from 91. It said 91. So we were oh, Okay, yeah. yeah. So I was 11. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, why was you listening to that at 11? Listen, listen and sing it along. in your life? Baby. <laughs> we were going through some things. We were preparing ourselves. <laughs> That's what Girl, it was. Sir. Listening to Quiet Storm quiet at 11. Sto- <laughs> waiting for, when you heard that thunder come on, baby. <laughs> listen. <laughs> Why are we this old? Oh, I would go to sleep on the quiet storm, honey. I would put my radio on. And Blue Monday? Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Y'all don't know. 
and got Club a clue. radio was a savior back then. Yes. To have I don't a even clock radio to and look, because you know you had to go to bed. Your parents wouldn't let you watch no TV. So right. you had real bedtimes. Mm-hmm. Wasn't no electronics back then. All you had was that radio. That was it. And you had to learn how to read the dial. Mm-hmm. You know, y'all were, <laughs> it y'all wasn't y'all no was digital stuff. Climbing the damn walls because y'all can barely read clocks. Child, listen. <laughs> oh, my Lord. That yeah. was like a blessing. Oh, baby, listen. And that's why I always say, we grew up at a perfect time because, and I think you mentioned this last week, like we were, we grew up like where we still had the old school ways, you know, and then, Mm -hmm. but we also grew up in the computer age too. We were still young. Yeah. So yeah, I I should, yeah, I should say digital, not computer age because computer has been around, but um, yeah. So it was like, we grew up at a perfect time. It's like you said, trying to find, get the station right on that dial was hell. Mm -hmm. You had to have patience. And it'd be a guy. Listen, you come around to find a rock and roll. Say, oh shit, I don't want to hear this. But why those always came in clear though, and then the black stations you had to like really get it on. <laughs> now we know. Now we know. We know now and get it before. Now we know all this shit been racism. From right. The start. That's it. That's it. When um, you think about that, because when was I was watching something, mm-hmm. or, and I was like. Damn, if we knew then, Listen. well, we know now that all oh, this shit been racism all along, <sighs> and we thought it was something completely different. Baby, look, I told you, I think I've mentioned this before. I don't know if I said it on this podcast or just us in talking or whatever, because, you know, it's basically all in the same, you know, how we do. <laughs> uh, but a friend of mine who I went to elementary school with, he, you know, brought up something like that the teachers used to, like, you know, because, of course, we had, I think I had a black, my first teacher my kindergarten teacher was black so I was fortunate there mm-hmm. but ever since but it was white 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 you know until oh, wow. I got to middle school probably till I got to seventh grade I think that's when I had another mm-hmm. black teacher but anyway he you know he was just like you know so and so would just say stuff sometimes and obviously it still bothered him because mm-hmm. all these years later and this wasn't that long ago Mm-hmm. You know, that he was really just like, you know, they were really racist. And then I sat and thought about it and I was just like, yeah. wow. You know, yeah, mm-hmm. like they really did. Because, you know, our teachers were older. Yeah. You know, and we didn't have like young teachers probably until we got to like maybe middle school. Well, at least I didn't. I'm going to speak for myself until I got like to, right. you know, high school maybe even. But, you know, it was just like, we really dealt with some shit and we just didn't know what it was and they got away with so much stuff because we didn't know. Right. You know what I mean? And even if we were to complain, you know, nothing would have probably happened anyway. But if we understood, but just think about it. It's just like we dealt with some shit for years because of when we grew up, the time that we grew up, we were really naive to that stuff because it was all kumbaya and everybody come together and you know, and us being young, but it's just like, you just think about it, you're just like, damn, we really dealt with some shit, and the world has always been racist. (laughs) It's just always, yeah, and it's just, it's crazy. And to think that there would be times when they actually had us believing that people who lived in the projects were lazy mm-hmm. people and they had black people believe in this too. exactly yeah that people who lived in the projects were lazy um or they were uneducated mm, on welfare or and... you know just a, a numerous amount of negative things mm-hmm. that they you know oh they're all violent and <clears throat> Uh, that is completely not true. Exactly. And now we see that honestly, it was all systematic racism and still is systematic mm-hmm. racism. Yeah, oh, yeah, because it's still going on. Yeah. Um, because I frequented Agla Green Project. Listen. And um, met some of the nicest people. Listen. Um, I've been going to school, so I live completely. When we were in elementary school, I lived by Norfolk Mall. Mm-hmm. Like right behind Norfolk Mall mm-hmm. where the movie theater is. Right. And you I movie theater girl. I probably was supposed to go to what's the what's the middle school 
that was across the street from Brookhaven. Oh, that's that where you went? Yeah, Clinton. Yep. So I was a, probably supposed to go to Clinton. Yeah. But I got in the lottery, and I went to Mifflin. Okay. Yeah, that yeah, cool. that's right. It was a uh, it was a lottery school. That's right. So I went there because uh, it had you know multiple. They had multiple foreign languages. Mm-hmm, it was international that's right. middle school. Yeah, that's right. And so, um. I was fortunate enough to go to school with everybody who lived over there. Mm-hmm. So that included Agua Green, that included Somerset, mm-hmm. Cassidy Village, Cassidy Farms, Cumberland Ridge. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because did Tracy go to middle school with me? I don't know if people from Cumberland Ridge, did they go to middle school with me? They would have had to. Yeah, they wouldn't. Yeah, because my cousin, she grew up out there and she went to uh, Little Mifflin for middle school. Yeah. Yeah. So I was fortunate enough to make amazing friends. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I, I feel n- now that you think back, mm-hmm. you know, I wish this, this is going to sound crazy because it's like, girl, you was a kid. <laughs> but, but I wish now. I would have come home because mm. even though I never lived out there, mm-hmm. the knowledge I have today about when you was a kid, you think, Oh, you just, I was so helpful. Oh, I want to do this here, 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 here. Right. I used to be a giver. Mm-hmm. I still am now, but in a more systematic way, as far as like, okay, who can we give meals to? Mm-hmm. Who can we assist with services? You know, Oh my voice! I'm sorry. Hold this on. girl might has been going in and out the pad all week, so I get it. Yeah. So, um, you know, I've, now I'm a little different with with the way that I go about it. But, mm-hmm. um, I wish I would have come home because the people they are completely the opposite. They're hardworking. Yeah. They're friendly. They're loving. Mm-hmm. You know. And I'm gonna say it again. I met some of the best people. And Nana lived in Agra Green. Mm-hmm. When I think I've told this story before, when Nana got divorced, mm-hmm. she originally lived in Brittany Hills. Right. When she moved right before her and Paul Paul got married, when she left her first husband, she moved to Agra Green. Mm-hmm. And you know, that's where they went to. Cause my mother went to Mifflin high. Went, she went to Mifflin High School, mm-hmm. but it was the middle school. It was the back middle then. school back then, yeah. Right, because our high school didn't open until I think like eighty three or eighty four or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's completely the opposite of what now we see. All of this was a system to try to get us to believe something that wasn't true. Mm-hmm. It still isn't true to this day. It's the, and the sad thing is, you talk about going back, but the sad thing is, some people don't want to go back. You know, it's not that you didn't have it. You know, these people have a choice. And the thing about it is there are so many black people Mm -hmm. who have moved on and everything like that, but they still have it in their minds that they'll look down on people who grew up in that area or who still live in that area. You know, because they've moved on and they won't look back and they'll still be like, oh, that's ghetto. Oh, yo, you still live in the ghetto. Oh, your your grandmother lives in the ghetto. You know, it's just like everything, mm-hmm. you know, and we joke around and talk about things are ghetto, whatever, because, of course, we got that from, you know, the one and only the fabulous NeNe Leaks. You know, it's just this never going to get old. But things really are ghetto, but it's not the way that right. people use it in a mm-hmm. negative light. You know, I mean, well, I'm just going to say it here. I don't care. <laughs> I said it to you yesterday. Like, so if anybody is unaware, there have been a mass number of what they call swatting calls. Mm, That's ridiculous. Um, They had one, I know, in Cincinnati yesterday. Mm. But you said they had like three in Columbus yesterday? It was two. I know one made the news for sure at Licking Heights, and then they said there was another one in Newark. So it was either two or three for sure. Oh, well, so my mother, she called me because she was frantic because um, my best friend is an assistant principal. Mm -hmm. So she was like trying to figure out if anything had happened at her school. Right. And I was like, no, but something did happen at her stepdaughter's school. Like, I was like, this is ironic that you say this because there was a call 
at her stepdaughter's school in Cincinnati. Mm-hmm. So, um, so there there was a call there, but I think they said, you know, my mother she watched the news a lot. Right. In total, the past ten days, there have been like fifteen swatting calls. I mean. And I told them, and I told my friend as she was driving Mm -hmm. to make sure the child was okay yesterday. Right. I said, you know, it used to be that people used to say stuff like, oh, you go to East High School? Mm -hmm. Oh, you go to Brookhaven? Oh, you go to Mifflin? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's that school. It's ghetto. Mm -hmm. I said, now, you start telling me your kids go to places like Thomas Worthington? And you and you a black parent, mm-hmm. I feel like that's ghetto. Listen. Because I feel like being around, no disrespect, y'all, but being around white folk has started to get real ghetto. Very. It's like, I told, I think I've said it here, they is the new black folk. Yeah. Because now when you see white folks coming, you be like, ooh, ooh. Mm-hmm. go by. Let me lock my doors, honey. How they used to do us. Mm-hmm. You see them coming. And it ain't out of fear. It's out of like, ooh, let me get away from them. Yeah, because you don't know what's going to happen. It, it, but it's true, though. It's just like when you hear about crazy stuff happening, you know, things like mm-hmm. that and stuff, it's not in the black schools let's, or quote unquote city schools, and public that, yes, schools. And that's what I told her. Yeah. I said, because at this point, you're sending your kids to school with them mm-hmm. and they're just exposed to things that they would never be exposed to in a black school. Exactly. Right. And I think we, I don't want to say don't take responsibility. The, the school is only presenting your child with so much information. Mm-hmm. The, so people always talk about how smart Sade is, right? Mm-hmm. Like, oh my God, she's so smart. She's so well behaved. She did not get that from school. I just want to put that out there. Listen, this is not me patting any of us on our back Mm -hmm. for raising her, right? But what I want to show you is when Shade was in her foundational years, like kindergarten, before that, because she'd been going to school since pre K. Mm -hmm. So, pre K, Head Start, go back again. She'd been in school since Head Start. Right. But in those early years, like Head Start and Pre-K, it was like instilling discipline. Mm-hmm. You know, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. You know, getting her to, you know, but that's what you're supposed to do when you're raising a kid, I thought. Yeah, that's, I mean, you know, that's what I thought <clears throat> too, but you know. Exactly. So that, that, those, those were the formative years of like discipline and how to eat properly, how to sit at the table, mm-hmm. you get your plate, get a napkin. You know, the basic stuff that you teach people how to be civilized. Mm-hmm. So then, as she began to get in kindergarten, we exposed her to the library, to a lot of books. Yeah, I used to take her to the library. My grandmother used to take her to the library. So, um, and then I would buy, actually buy her books. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So she read a lot. And we're talking about kindergarten. Mm-hmm. Those were the books that were on her level. And then sometimes I would be like, mm, she's a little smart. Let me get her a first grade book or a second grade book. Right. Let's just see what happens. So she would read a lot from kindergarten to third grade. She did not watch a lot of TV, mm-hmm. if, if any at all, honestly. Maybe she watched TV on the weekends when she went to her mother's. But... When it comes to like the day to day, she didn't really watch TV Monday mm-hmm. through Friday. Mm-hmm. She read a lot, but in reading a lot, guess what? She was in the fourth grade. They said she was reading at a seventh grade level. See, and that was done at home. So, so don't. And, and my grandmother was really big on that, like because they, they would send all these things and try to say like, oh go to DECA or um, I think Kip. She would get stuff from Kip in Columbus. Oh, okay. Like, and my grandmother was like, why are they sending stuff for her to go, like, for this school? Like, mm-hmm. it's in Columbus. Like, right. it's clearly said it on the flyer. Right. <laughs> <clears throat> and her test scores, like, like, they was crazy. Mm-hmm. Even back then in elementary school. Mm-hmm. She just, 
I wish I had the paper at, at my disposal, like white in my hand. She gave me her test scores and was like, here. And looked at, she's in the 11th grade now. Mm-hmm. And um, I can't believe that, but anyway. Listen, <laughs> she was in the 11th grade and those test scores, one of them, I think it was her language arts. She said, I tied for first place. Me mm-hmm. and another boy were the highest in the school. Mm-hmm. Y'all, but in that's because school. we started her reading. It, it had nothing to do with what they was teaching her at the school because the people at the school was like, she too smart. Mm-hmm. We're going to move her up a grade. That's how she got in 11th grade. Yeah. She should be in the 10th. Right. But it, it, you are responsible for the stuff that your kids are learning. Mm-hmm. What are you exposing them to? Don't think that you sending them to a white school makes them smarter than other kids. I done said this before. I know of a guy sent his son to one of them schools. Mm-hmm. And he ended up not only having to leave high school and go to a junior college, he still ended up going to a HBCU. At the end of the day. So you should have just sent him because your purpose for sending him to the white school, so you said was, so he could get better offers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> to make him a better player and all that. Right. He goes to HBCU right now. See? I mean, black people got to get out of that mindset, honestly. Yes. And, and, it, I, and I quote Charlemagne yeah. on this every time. White ice is not colder. <laughs> like, I, don't, I don't know who told y'all that. Right. I, I just don't know where I got that from. And it's uh, it's the plantation. Yeah, That's I was going to say it's that from. plantation mentality. Mm-hmm. And black people still had that regardless if it's education, regardless if it's um, where you live, regardless if it's classism, regardless if it's skin tone. You know, mm-hmm. it's just, it's it's still so many. And that's why when some, when even black people do it, but when white people do it and they just say, oh, they j- try to dismiss it the mm-hmm. ones that do believe slavery happened because you know that's a new thing where slavery may not even happen you know but uh listen but uh the same way with the holocaust you know they don't think the holocaust happened but you know that's a whole nother subject for a whole nother day but anyway child but it's that mentality that has came down from generation to generation and is still affecting us today and so when they try to dismiss it and just be like oh that was so long ago or why you know i remember i I tell this story all the time real quick Mm -hmm. i was in um let me see i think i was home for wait what was i oh i because i was gonna say i was older this wasn't when i was an undergrad but i took a class at columbus state it was a um and what people don't know columbus state is the local community college here I was preparing myself for graduate school, but I was going for my MBA. So I didn't take any, hardly in my undergrad, I didn't take hardly any business classes. So I took a couple of business classes, but one of the classes I had to take, I had like a, I think like to get my um, loan for that semester or that quarter, it was back on quarters then. When I had to get my loan for that quarter, I had like two more credit hours I had to take. Mm -hmm. So I took like a, um, it was a social science class. It wasn't sociology, oh, okay. it was social mm-hmm. science. So I took that. It was an evening class. And, you know, of course, at the time, I was probably in my mid-20s, going into my late 20s. And so, you know, I was a little older than people that were probably in, a lot of people that were in the class. Yeah, we had older people in there. But anyway, there was this white girl in there. And, you know, it's a social science class, so we're talking about classism and all this other stuff. And she did not understand and she was young. You could tell this is probably her first year in college. You know, she probably came from a suburban area or whatever. But she really could not grasp the fact that black people um, had classism amongst them. Because that's what we were talking about. We were talking about different classisms with <coughs> races. She could not believe that. She was just, like, really dumbfounded by it. And she just she convinced herself that white people don't do that, which I'm glad somebody older and white did get her together, and the instructor got her together too. But we were trying to tell her, we've experienced it. We see this every day. It happens. And because she just sat there and told you mm-hmm. that she didn't believe it, mm-hmm. her parents. Exactly. That's where I was that getting proves to. to me that her parents. Mm-hmm. Think that they're upper class. Yeah, that they, that they are above mm-hmm. white people, 
in a trailer park. Yeah. Yep. So because I mean, she doesn't she, even see those people. I mean, she just convinced herself that, and like you said, that came from years of that being ingrained in her because mm-hmm. she just could not believe it. And she was just like, I just don't see it, you know, or something yes, like that. Yes, she doesn't because it comes from years of living in a bubble. Exactly. Like all the people you see mm-hmm. are the people in your neighborhood, the people who make the same amount of money that mm-hmm. your parents make. Right. The people who drive the same kind of cars that your parents drive. Mm-hmm. That proves the classism. Right. You you don't even know anyone who's white and mm-hmm. on food stamps. Right. So then that also helps fueling racism mm-hmm. since all you see is white successful people. Yep. Then you don't even know that white people exist who are poor. Mm-hmm. Who are getting more food stamps than black people. Right. And that helps you go out and give a negative narrative and say, oh, it's only the blacks that are living in poverty mm-hmm. because you don't know any poor white people. Right. But they do exist. They do exist. And I will stand, like you always say, I will stand on this hill and die on it. If there weren't white people who needed these government assist government assistant programs and things like that, we wouldn't have them. So, oh God! So no. marinate on that. Welfare would not exist if it wasn't for white people. Poor Please white people. Please educate yourself. Educate yourself. Say I'm not saying it to you. I'm saying it to our listeners. Mm-hmm. Please educate yourselves on what the movement was really about. Exactly. How was it Kennedy who went to the Appalachians? Mm-hmm. Yep. It's on YouTube. Watch the tape. Exactly. I watch everything else on YouTube. They showing y'all how to do backflips and shit. <laughs> watch something to educate yourself. Not backflips, but yeah, yeah. But seriously. Watch something that's important mm-hmm. because the, the information is right there. It's right there. But so many people just don't want to. I don't know if it's the fact that it's laziness or it's just an arrogance where you don't want to go back there. I don't know what it is, but there are so many things that can educate you and it will change your mind on how things are still going today. Yep. Just like, let me say this. The, uh, I guess he's a rapper. I don't know who this child is, but it's um, the he's the boyfriend of um, Halle Bailey, who of course is going to be the new uh, Little Mermaid. And of course, we know all the backlash and everything that she's got, you know, for being black and having dreads in the movie. And oh, you know, it's just a whole bunch. Of, of course, it's racist bullshit. Mm-hmm. He gets on a radio show, and the DJ um, asks him. You know, how do you feel about, you know, the backlash that your girlfriend's getting and everything? And he's just like, she, you know, she prepared herself for it. She was just, you know, like whatever, you know, she's just doing her job and, you know, she just brushes it off. That's how she portrays it to him. He gets on there and he says, I thought racism was over. I thought Martin Luther King, um, Martin Luther King, girl, he said, and he was serious. And this is a young black man. And I'm just like, y'all just do not, are you, do people really just not, do they just. Chloe, Haley, whichever one of y'all got the job, break up with him. Break up with him immediately because he, he don't even read. Google that. Just look at that. Look, I don't know what his name is. Cause like I said, I don't know that child. I didn't even know she had a boyfriend, whatever, but yeah, he sure did. He said that, you know, he thought racism was gone. He thought, you know, Martin Luther King took care of that back in the day. That's exactly what he said. Not in those exact words, but that's pretty much what he said. And even the DJ was looking like, <laughs> like, what the hell? Like, are you serious, yes. though? And he was serious. So that is just like, like what is wrong with these people? I mean, and just, just like Keisha said, the information is out there. If you're confused about something, if you don't understand something, if something doesn't seem right, y'all love, you know, getting on here and telling people what to do and what to say and everything like that. Google, it. Google is your good girlfriend. Just let her, you know, just put in there what you want to know and she will lead you right to it. Yes. You know, that's Google it. Google it. Oh, my You can gosh. find everything you're looking for. Child, listen. Woo. I saw something, and I think I sent it to you, mm-hmm. but I honestly... <laughs> I'm getting old. I honestly forget why I what it said. Like what made me. I know that the girl was making a comment in a way like, "Oh, it was about the affair with Emma Udoka." Mm-hmm. I get yeah. he's saying his name right. Child. It it don't matter, you know, because he he's irrelevant right now. Well, he's not irrelevant, <laughs> but you know, his uh, actions have caused him to be. You know, we're going to call you whatever we want to. 
child and my Udoka mm-hmm. is, I mean, so now <laughs> let's talk about it. Let's go so, back to it. Let's go back because there's some more stuff that's come out. So, so, so the thing that was so or let's talk about originally. Mm-hmm. Originally, we hear this report be released from ESPN. You know, ESPN, y'all do a lot of being in everybody business except Brett Favre. I mean, let's start right. Let's go back real quick because, like I posted yesterday, we talked about this two weeks ago on this show. Two weeks exactly, I believe, episode three or four, or whatever the hell it was. And there have hardly been any news outlets that have talked about this. And it's just bullshit after bullshit that is literally, li- li- oh, I just made up a word. Lord have mercy. I said literally. <laughs> that is little by little <laughs> be- <laughs> being brought out there. People who don't know me know I make up words all the damn time. Listen. But, okay, I know what they mean, so it's fine. There, you know, and it's just like, but still, these major outlets have not said shit. But go ahead, girl. And this comes from a person who watches ESPN every day. Mm-hmm. With my, because of my relationship, I'm forced. Right, I was going to say, whether it's by ESPN force or not. <laughs> from 4 to 6 p.m. Mm-hmm. And I'm telling you, I watch a, one hour of a program that's completely devoted to the NFL. Mm-hmm. And the next two are variety shows right our sports commentating shows whatever y'all call them on that channel yeah uh, listen i have not seen espn be in anybody's business <laughs> like they need they need to be in brett Favre's business i mean but i'll talk about that again too so espn of course is behind this report that comes out that there is an issue in the Celtics organization, and it looks like it may do because because remember when the report first got released, we just heard that he may be suspended. Right. He was not suspended yet when they released the report. Mm-hmm. It was like we just knew that the Celtics investigation had a, or something. Some of those words yeah, that we they just used. knew that the Celtics had an investigation of an improper relationship that he was involved in. Mm-hmm. With a stel- a Celtics staffer. So that's what they said. So then a couple of days later, still didn't say that he was suspended, but it looks like he's going to be suspended. Mm-hmm. Okay, now a picture is attached to the woman that they say he's involved with. Okay, still we don't know. Now and we and, and this is the, the thing, and they were talking about this on ESPN. The thing that was weird about this was, why did you release the information? Why did we need to know? Right. And why did you release it? But we don't even really know what happened. Mm-hmm. There's there's not actually a report to back it up. There's It's kind of like a he said, she said thing. Right. We know that the report exists, or we know that the investigation took place, we should say. But anytime there's an investigation in any serious matter, there has to be some report generated Mm -hmm. as to what the findings of the investigation were. And especially for that to come out the way it did. Absolutely. So where is the report? Mm -hmm. Because I want to see it. What's the detail of what actually took place? Mm -hmm. Um, So now, you know, the guys on ESPN are like buzzing. Well, who it, who's involved? Not only who's involved, are there more? Is it more than one woman and one woman involved? Um, why? Because now we're hearing, oh, he is suspended for a year. Mm-hmm. Well, a year? Well, that's a lot. That seems a little excessive. Mm-hmm. Just for just for cheating, or you so know, what the... took place? Mm-hmm. Because you you guys are saying that the relationship is consensual. So for a consensual inappropriate work relationship which let's be clear it does violate team policy right and we know that you new people don't know about policies and procedures <laughs> and we know you don't know about office dress code and <laughs> things of that nature i mean just say those it. things do exist and they have existed in the workforce for quite a long time mm-hmm. and in case you don't know it's called a non-fraternization clause you know most corporations have them mm-hmm. And no matter how we see the Celtics, that is a business. Yeah. 
it's they have an office mm-hmm. and they you know there's that's a working office environment right because nba well professional athletes will tell you that it's a business for them it's entertainment for us but it's a business for them absolutely that mm-hmm. they go that's their job that's their they job right so now we're hearing that it was a consensual relationship okay but if it's consensual still why a year but mm-hmm. maybe that's their policy but guess what? We don't know if that's your policy or not because you ain't showed us. Exactly. What is the po- Where is the information? Mm-hmm. Now, yesterday, we're hearing <laughs> that the actual woman who he was involved with is not the woman who they've been spreading that picture around of. Mm-hmm. That his affair was with Kathleen Lynch. And Kathleen is the wife of the Celtics, Vice President Patrick Lynch. Mm. And now here (laughs) is the fucking problem. (laughs) Get on that soapbox, girl. Go ahead. You've been fucking the Vice President's wife. I mean. You know she's a white girl. I know y'all wondering is she Mm. white? She She is is white. That girl they was showing. She she looked like she mixed or she black Mm -hmm. or something. She ain't. Yeah, she likes skin. Mm -hmm. This is a white girl. Mm -hmm. And here is his real problem. Mm-hmm. He didn't got caught sleeping with the boss's wife. The boss's white wife. And that's where the problem is. Mm-hmm. And so now, maybe Matt Barnes knew then. Because Matt Barnes, as you told me, he put out a video or a tweet. He deleted the tweet, but then he came back with the reason why he deleted the tweet and said, somebody from the organization or somebody who he knows behind the scenes called him and told him all the information and matt said it's not my place Mm -hmm. to tell but it's foul right you think she was pregnant child but then i was not only that not only for you know like people who may have a little bit more inside like someone like matt barnes or somewhere someone like that Mm -hmm. but I remember I was telling you that I came across an article and I didn't read the article, so I'm not going to go into Mm -hmm. detail, but it says something like almost to a sense like where he was making women in the organization feel uncomfortable. That wasn't the exact title, but that's basically what it was saying. And so that's what a lot of the sports writers are like trying to ask, like, okay, so what else happened? Mm -hmm. If anything else, what else happened? Right. Is there more to this story that you are not telling us? Because there were a lot of players, you know, or just people in general who were coming to his defense, not in him cheating, but this, this, the way that the punishment was well, a little Stephen excessive. Stephen Smith said it. He said, look, I know people. He said, it's a lot of that going on in the organization. Like, mm-hmm. not saying the Celtics, but he said in the NBA, it's right. a lot of that going on. Oh, yeah. So yeah, what yeah. constituted this, this. black man? Mm-hmm. And Steve, Stephen A. Smith's position was this a brother. And why his affair is being plastered, well, now it makes sense. Yep. As I'm saying these words out of my mouth, Stephen A. Smith knew when he made that statement that Udoko was sleeping with the boss's wife. And he was trying to tell us why is this brother's affair being plastered? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of them is doing it. Instead of posing the question, he was saying it like, pay attention. Mm -hmm. There's more to it. It's the reason why Mm -hmm. this affair is being plastered. Mm Mm-hmm. Because you knew that he was sleeping with the boss's wife and you knew she was white. Right. Because he looked at it from a racist way. Mm-hmm. He was like, this this don't make sense. It's other people doing it besides this brother. So why his, why this affair? Right. That's why. Because he was sleeping with the VP's wife. Mm-hmm. Who is a white girl. Yep. Now let me tell y'all black people something. <laughs> I'm going to tell you black men something. I don't care how much you think you're getting away with it. Them white men going to remind you you black every time. In a second. And it happens, to these, to, stop that. Yeah, it happens to these rich black men all the time. 
and it's sad, but, you know, they get very arrogant. They got money. They got fame. They got popularity. And they think that they're equal. They think they're someone's equal. Even if they marry a white woman, whatever, you think you're someone's equal. No. They will remind you that the minute Every that you time. F up, you do the slightest thing. What he, what obviously what Aimee Adoka did was bad, you know, for all this to happen to a sense, you know. I mean, it's not. Right. But even the smallest thing you do that they don't like, they're going to remind you every day that you're a nigga. Yep. Okay. And if you're Sarver okay. or however the hell you say his name is, he's going to call you <laughs> to your face and, yep. play, and play it off like it's in the song. Uh uh-uh. uh. Yeah. Child. And speaking of him, real quick, he's looking for buyers for the uh, Suns and Mercury, everybody. So if you want to buy the Suns and Mercury, you can buy it from him for millions of dollars and, you know, he can go on somewhere. I wonder if Puffy going to buy it. He should. I know he's not into Phoenix. You know, I don't know think I've ever heard about him being connected to Arizona, mm-hmm. but. But he should just do it just for GP. Right. And then he can turn around and sell it if he wants to, but just do it for GP. Mm-hmm. Yep. They need to let some black people in the NFL. Yeah. yeah. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. You know, and then like we've been saying with this Brett Favre thing, I want more coverage like y'all did for Colin Kaepernick taking a damn knee and for Michael Vick, you know, uh, dog fighting, which I, which I'm not saying that you know that was right, but you know it's just like it is what it is. Y'all covered that. Y'all still cover it, like you said, and I caught this too when I was watching the Browns mm-hmm. versus the Steelers. They mentioned Deshaun Watson's ass. Yeah, and he's out somewhere doing his suspension like he's supposed to, and y'all still mentioning him, but they mention one damn thing, not even during halftime about Brett Favre. Not mm-hmm. halftime, not post game, not pre game, nothing. Y'all didn't mention nothing. shit. Mm-hmm. I can't. That's what they do, though. Mm-hmm. I'm sick of it, but you know, it's just, mm-hmm. Ooh, girl. But so I tell you, it's a lot. It's definitely been a lot this week. It has been. It is always some shit. Like I was telling Keisha, I was just like, we're never not going to have nothing to talk about ever. And just think about it. We don't even have. We're not even covering everything that we really want to just within this hour that we do on this show. And sometimes right. the show does go over, but you know, it's just like mainly the average is about 50 minutes to an hour. We try to give y'all. And right. it's just like, it's just so much. We don't even like we like throughout the week, you know, we'll update like a, a, our Apple notes, the things that we want to talk about or whatever. And we still have things we haven't even covered, but it's just so much stuff happens. It's right, 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 from day to day. From day to day. But this this was just a lot. Not only did it involve one of our national treasures, but it's just <laughs> like it should have just opened people's eyes to Negroes. Right. Y'all are not special. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they will remind you're special to us. But to white folks, you're just another Negro. And you will always be that. Absolutely. Keep that in mind. Yeah. Child. All right. All right, y'all. Well, I think we got a lot out on that. <laughs> we did. I told you I didn't take not one note. I just wrote down that we were going to. <laughs> I think I put on here cheating. That was it. Yeah. That is what we said. Yeah. Yep. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. All right, then. All I right, hope child. you all have a wonderful week, a blessed week. Try to stay faithful. Women That's it. Too. Yeah. Everybody stay faithful. Have some honor while you at work. That's it. Because it will fire you. And if you're weak, get out the relationship. Just let it go. <laughs> I'm just saying. As <laughs> always, you can reach us on Instagram at girl underscore you know what at wellness and women and at Danny B Speaks. Yes. From those links, you can reach us on our prospective websites and email addresses. Yes, ma'am. So we hope to hear from you, and you all have a blessed week. Yes, everybody, and thank you again for listening, and we'll catch y'all on the next one. Bye. Bye, everybody.